Today I'm painting the War Games Atlantic Gothic Warriors and showing you how I managed to get a what I think is a reasonable uh, looking warband in a short amount of time using some pretty easy techniques. Just to uh, give you a heads up, we're starting from uh, basically the model from the left. This is doesn't really matter if you're doing bows or just standard warriors. And in the end, I will show you how to get to this result, uh, which is pretty reasonable for tabletop and doesn't take a massive amount of time. And it's a combination of just standard uh, kind of usual painting techniques plus uh, speed paints. So step number one is prime black and then zenithal highlight from the Zandri dust or any other kind of pale uh, yellowish base coat. This basically means that you have a really good coverage for 50% uh, plus of the model starting off. And uh, it's light enough that if you put some darker speed paints over it, then it will still get the desired results. One of the easiest things I found was nobody really looks at trousers. So you can get away with relatively dark trousers. Nobody really cares. Um, so I tended to basically hit the trousers with something dark, uh, same thing with the shoes, and then hit all the leather parts and the hair as well. This was my first attempt using speed paint, so one thing I did, um, which I'm sure has been said many times by different videos, is you really have to be very neat. It's difficult to fix any mistakes afterwards, so um, what you gain in terms of speed from not layering and shading, etc., you need to make sure that you spend a little bit more time and just making sure that you color within the lines. I picked up about five or six different speed paints um, from dark wood to hardened leather uh, to some kind of bleached bone um, and a relatively neutral green, I think camo green, something like that, um, and the crusader skin. However, I don't, my, my philosophy behind this was really to focus on the areas that people actually look at. So people don't look at trousers, people don't care about shoes, uh, people sometimes look at the tunics, but as long as it's not outrageously badly painted, people generally won't notice it. What people do notice is faces, shields, and weapons. Here I'm doing the tunic, since this is a large uh, kind of surface area, just make sure you don't let the paint pool. Um, I think people manage to ruin their speed paint um, kind of figures so much by just leaving large blotches of speed paint lying around. Don't do that, just spend the extra second to absorb it. One of the nice things using the sandry dust over a uh, black base coat is that sometimes you can get pretty lazy and just get away with just not doing anything to uh, the the sandry dust itself, maybe touching up one or two places, but nothing more than that. In ideal situation, and it takes a little bit of practice to make sure that you uh, base coat properly there and you don't go over the top. Anyway, here there's like a little bit of cleaning up happening, um, especially with the darker especially with the darker uh, army painters. I couldn't help myself and I went back to some of the normal uh, normal paints. This field blue color from Vallejo is one of my favorite colors for getting a cool type of cool white. So it covers really nicely and it gives a nice cool um, contrast compared to some of the warmer colors, especially when, uh, when you use a lot of the speed paints over warm sand color. So we gain a lot of time not bothering with a lot of the fabrics. However, we have to spend a little bit of time making sure that the um, the skin and the weapons are nice. So here I decided to give it a very nice contrast color uh, with the, the spears being uh, basically red base coat and then some decorations, either blue banding or most of them are actually just uh, solid red. This gives a nice contrast 
um, people tend to look at it as well. Uh, and that's just using two uh, hull red and then some gore red above it, which both have a very nice coverage. Here I'm adding some highlights, uh, just adding a little bit of white with um, into the, the, the field blue uh, to make it uh, just a little bit more interesting. This isn't really necessary, I think. Um, this is probably me just going back to my, uh, my old ways. Um, but it gives you a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of, yeah, different textures and different, uh, different colors compared to just using the speed paints. One thing I noticed with the speed paints is that since they're not very opaque or highly saturated, um, different colors tend to blend in. So, uh, especially if you have two relatively light colors next to each other, like here, one really easy way of making the tunics seem like you spend a lot more time than you did is putting this banding around the uh, the edges. So it's easy to do using uh, basically a, a dark base coat here, the whole red for the, the red and then core red over the top um, for uh, over a lighter one. I think here I'm doing blue, so just any kind of Prussian blue, something like that. And you just hit all the edges and it looks, uh, makes it look so much nicer and also helps differentiate and um, helps you kind of see what's going on with the, the model a little bit more easily. So also doing a little bit of metals with uh, I think black metal from Vallejo, Vallejo. and then uh, another key focus area is doing the skin properly so being careful not to touch any of the, uh, the hair that's been done with speed paint putting in a dark skin tone over the Zandri dust is pretty easy it's uh, very easy to cover and if you dilute a little bit you also manage to get a little bit of shading uh, without too much effort. So one or two highlights here with basic skin tone just to make all the features stand out. Um, and then I don't actually use a wash over the skin because otherwise it just gets a little bit too washed out and uh, doesn't pop as much as I would like. That's the basic warrior done. At some point I will make a tutorial about uh, hand painting shields. But as you see here, most of the figure gets covered by the shield, so don't worry about it too much. Um, and as you can see, I painted some of the uh, the spears with some banding, etc., just to make it a little bit nice and and fancy. But if you look closely at some of the tunics, you can definitely see uh, just the primer showing through as well. But uh, from uh, from 30 centimeters or 50 centimeters, you'd hardly uh, hardly notice it and it looks like quite a nice warband on the tabletop. So anyways, hope this helped some of you and thanks for watching.